Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video I'll show you how to turn a simple MIDI controller like my Novation Launch Key 25 here into a simple DAW controller to control things like faders, pans, sends, track mutes, track solos, track selection, and playback. Now, there are a lot of control surfaces out there for various DAWs, but the difference between those and a simple one fader MIDI controller like this is that my launch key is not intended to be used as a mix controller. It's meant to be used as a MIDI controller for inputting notes, modulation wheel, pitch bend, uh, some basic rotary knobs for controlling synthesizer and plug-in parameters, and again, one fader. So this is not a substitute for setting up a proper control surface for Logic. That's a completely different process. What this is, is it's a workaround to use your small format MIDI controller as a mix controller so you don't have to use the mouse to control faders in your mix window. So in this video, I'll be assigning my single fader to adjust volume on whatever channel I have selected. The first rotary knob will be assigned to pan for whatever channel I have selected. The next three are going to be assigned to the first three effect sends, uh, the send amounts on whatever selected channel I have. Uh, these top two pads here are gonna control the uh, bank channel left and bank channel right. So basically select previous channel, select next channel. So I don't have to do that with my mouse. These bottom two buttons will be mute and solo for whatever channel I have selected. And then additionally, I'll set up the transport controls as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just for demonstration, I'll create eight audio tracks. I'll just go ahead and create uh, a few software instrument tracks as well. And I'll hit X to open up my mixer. So yeah, right now, if I wanna move knobs and faders, I have to kind of do it here. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna hit Shift Option K. This is gonna pull up your controller assignments window. It may go to the easy view. Click on expert view and make sure there are no um, assigned controls in here. If there are, delete them because we don't want anything that we do with our mix controller to affect other things. So we just wanna start with a clean slate. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Automation. Then from here, I'm looking at this Automation Quick Access option. What I'm gonna do is click Learn Message and then move my volume fader. Now, what Automation Quick Access allows you to do, by the way, click Done once you're done. What Automation Quick Access allows you to do is it allows you to only apply the CC action to whatever uh, fader you have selected. So if I select audio one here, move the fader, it controls the volume. If I go to audio five, control the fader, it controls the volume and so forth and so on. So let's do the same thing with uh, sends and pan. So real quick, I'm just gonna create some sort of bogus effect sends here on bus one, bus two, and bus three for all of those channels. And I'll hit Shift Option K to pull up my controller assignments. Then what I'm gonna do is click Learn Mode. Click on one of these volume uh, or pan knobs here rather. And then turn this first rotary knob here. So you can see it's, it's learned it. And you wanna make sure that uh, under Channel Strip it says Selected Track here. Because I wanna be able to move over to another one and control its pan as well. I don't wanna to have to assign these you know, individually. Next, what I'll do is I'll assign the send amount. Note that learn mode is still on, and I'll assign this to my second rotary knob. Now notice that it doesn't really seem to be working. So what you have to do is under channel strip here, while that control is selected, is you have to go to selected track. Let's see if that works. There we go. So now it's working. So I'll click, I'll turn learn mode back on, move my second send here, move my third rotary knob. I'll do the same for the third bus or the third send here. Move this guy right here. And then turn off learn mode. So again, for pan, actually for all of these, for volume, pan, and all three of the send uh, controls, make sure that channel strip, uh, the channel strip option is set to selected track. 
So now, whatever track I have selected, not all of them though, let's close this out. Whatever track I have selected, the volume fader controls volume, the first rotary knob controls pan, the second controls the send amount for bus one, send two, send three, and you could assign additional um, controls as well, but I think I'll just stop at the three. One thing that's tricky here, and this goes for all of these controls, uh, let's say that on audio six here, I pull the volume way down, and then I pull the pan far left, I pull the buses or the sends all the way down, and then I move over to another channel. If I move my volume fader here, look what happens. Nothing happens at first, but as I move further up, it sort of it catches the controller. See, see that? So the controller has to be moved into the position of the of the channel that you select. Like for instance, these will work fine because they were already are uh, all the way down. But if I had these all the way up on this channel, but then I moved them all the way down on another channel, and then I move back to that previous channel and try to move these up, nothing's going to happen because the value of my three rotary knobs here for my three sends are lower than the current value on the channel. So that's just the way MIDI works. You have to go up and sort of get to it and then pull it back down, move up to it, catch the value and move back down. Same thing here. And the same thing goes for pan, you know. If I uh, pan this channel hard right, move over to another channel, pan it hard left, then move back to the previous channel, I'm going to have to move this knob, my pan knob, all the way over to the right to catch the value and then pull it back. So that's all my volume, pan, and send amounts. Let's talk about uh, banking. Uh, it's not like just sort of going uh, banking channels, not banking whole, you know, fader uh, groups of... Uh, faders. Uh, I don't want to have to click on a channel to move back and forth because then I'm constantly moving back and forth between my mouse and my MIDI controller. Now I could use the left and right keys or the up and down keys on my keyboard, but again, I'm having to go back and forth between two different devices. So the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to go up to Logic Pro 10, key commands, go to edit, or you can hit option K. And what I'm looking for First are these two key commands. One's called select previous track, and this one's called select next track. Now, there is, there's another one in here in the mixer. It's called, uh, I'll just do select channel. I'll search for select channel. Yeah, there's select previous left and right channel strips. You would think that that might be the control, but I'll explain to you in a second why that's incorrect to use this, at least for this application. So I'm going to go select track. And then we, you can see we have um, select previous track, the normal key command is up, select the next track, the normal key uh, command is down. So I'm gonna click on this one, click learn new assignment down here, and then press the button here that I want to control this with. So I'm just gonna press this first beat pad here, and it learns it, and you can see it says assignments one. I'll click on the next one, select the next track, click learn new assignment, and click this next one. The next thing I want to learn is mute and solo. So I'm gonna search mute. We have toggle channel strip mute. Normally you click M for that. So I'll click learn new assignment, press this one. It's learned it. And next I'll search for solo. And we have toggle channel strip solo, which is normally just S. So then I'll click learn new assignment and then press beat pad that I want to assign that to. So now, in my mixer, I can press these two buttons to sort of bank left and right between all of my uh, channels. And then I can press this to mute whatever selected channel I have and to solo whatever selected channel I have. Okay, so for some reason my solo button, for some reason the solo button's being weird. It's like the mute's working fine solos being weird. Let me just press shift option K. All of these will show up here as well. So I have toggle channel strip solo, toggle channel strip mute. For some reason the uh, minimum maximum value is set to 0 to 4 so I'd have to press a really low velocity for that. So I'm going to set this to 0 to 127. Any value can trigger it. 
As a matter of fact, if you want to make the the lower velocities on that beat pad less sensitive, like if you just accidentally bump it, but you don't actually want to press it, you might actually set a minimum value here. So I could set this to like 50, right? So I'll do the same thing here. I'll set these all to 50 to 127. Because right now they're yeah, right now they're being limited on the top end um, but not on the bottom end. We'll set this to 50 to 127. So that should work out a little better now. Now if I just barely tap on it, nothing happens, but if I really press on it, it works. So that'll sort of um, get rid of any faulty, you know, I accidentally, you know, pressed on it and sent a, a value. Um, now the mute's being weird. Hang on. That's probably just because the, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, I think 50 might be a little too much. Let me go like 25. We'll do 25. Because I'm really having to press those. But at least what this will do is any sort of just, you know, if I accidentally tap one, but just really, really gently, it's not going to accidentally trigger that uh, control. There we go. So toggling left and right, toggle mute, toggle solo, got my volume control, my pan control, my sends. All right. So I've got that set up. Um, you could also set up record enable if you want on another one. Um, this is going to have to do more with the main window, not the mixer. Um, but you could set up uh, toggle arm for record and input monitor as well if you wanted. You just go up to Logic Pro 10 key commands, edit. I'll just search up toggle record, and one of the options is toggle track record enable, which is normally control R. So I'll click learn new assignment. I'll assign that there. And then I can do toggle input monitor, toggle channel strip input monitoring, which is control I normally. I'll assign that to this fourth one here. And once again, I'm gonna go in shift option K, make these minimum 25, maximum 125, just so we don't have any mishaps. There we go. And again, if you're if you don't know why it's zero to one twenty seven is the range, that's that's the range of of MIDI values. Zero to all, all MIDI data is zero to one twenty seven. So like a knob all the way to the left is zero, all the way to the right is one twenty seven. One twenty seven is likewise the hardest that you can hit a key, and um, zero is the softest you can hit the key. It's like the velocity of the of the note. But here we're using it for a, a control, a track control rather. So now I can toggle like I did before. Mute, solo, arm for record, Whoop. <laughs> input monitor, and there you go. Okay, so next up, let me learn my playback controls or uh, transport controls as they're often called. So typically what I like to assign these two to is I like to assign them to um, moving one bar left or one bar right, which is normally your um, little bracket keys here. But another thing you can do is you can hit shift and you can move eight bars at a time. So it might be helpful to assign these to the shift bracket rather than just the bracket. Obviously stop is stop, playback is playback, record is record, and loop is, you know, you can use it to turn on cycle record. I mean, you can really assign it to anything. Um, so I'm just gonna use it to turn on my cycle mode. So same thing, go up to Logic Pro 10, key commands, edit, so the first one I'm looking for is forward, which here it says it's actually the period button, and that's just because the secondary button for that bracket is period. So this one's period and comma. And uh, so I'm gonna learn that. So I'll click learn new assignment. I'll press this button right here. I'll do the same for, I think they call it rewind. Yep, there's a rewind. Learn new assignment, learn that. Now there's also one called uh, fast rewind. That one goes back. That's the one that goes back and forth eight bars at a time. Um, you, so you could do either of those. It's up to really up to you. Um, I'm gonna do stop playback. So I'll just do stop, stop playback, learn new assignment. Press the stop button. I'll do play. Now there's there's a couple different ones. It's kind of uh, interesting that. Uh, the, the the key commands that are here, there's like play from selection, 
play from left uh, window edge, play or stop, and then play. So I'm just going to hit, I'm going to do with play. I'll just go with play there. Learn a new assignment, press play, play button. Um, I'll do cycle, which is C, toggle cycle mode, right? So learn new assignment, press the loop button over there. And the last one is record. So record is R. So learn new assignment, press the record button. So now I should be able to jump back and forward with my forward and reverse buttons here. Stop, well actually stop will also as a secondary function go back to the beginning. You can play. Play will actually jump back too. Stop, stop again goes back to the beginning. Turn on your cycle range and then record. Which I don't want to do that because I'm going to get a bunch of feedback <laughs> through my through my microphone. But if I go ahead and mute that channel, then arm it for recording, and then press record. Turn off my metronome there. Now I can actually record using all just my MIDI controller to mute it, to arm it, and to hit record. This is really great because it allows you to use any MIDI controller, even a really cheap small one like this as a DAW controller for mixing. Because I find myself in two different modes quite often. Uh, you know, I might be in, you know, MIDI composition arrangement mode where I want these things to be controlling different plugin parameters and modulation elements. But then I find myself in mix mode where it's like, okay, the composition is done. All of that has already been created. You know, I want to purely work with this as a mix controller rather than, you know, a composition device. All right, so that's pretty much it. I know someone will say in the comments, well, Josh, it took you 17 minutes to explain how to set this up. Well, sorry if you don't have 17 minutes of patience. I'm trying to show how to set this up so no one misses anything, and including some issues like the velocity settings that you might run into in the process. In reality, once you learn how to do this, it only takes like two minutes to set it up. I do this all the time when I'm doing mixing work from home. Now at the studio, we have a Mackie MCU, which is a great control surface, and in like three clicks, it's all set up in Logic, and all the faders and knobs are auto-mapped. The Mackie MCU is a $1,300 control surface that's intended just for mixing in Logic. My Novation Launch Key is a $125 MIDI controller. So again, this video is sort of a workaround for that to save money and use what you already have for mixing. It's not a primary demonstration of setting up control surfaces in Logic. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can also check me out at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.